Uh, good morning, everyone, and, uh, and welcome here to CSIS. Uh, my name is Carl Meacham, and I am the director of the Americas program uh, here. And uh, I am really excited to uh, have um, the Minister Jesus Gracia Aldaz with us today, uh, the Spanish Secretary of State for International Cooperation and for Ibero-America, uh, to chat about the, cha the changing dynamics of the relationship between Latin American countries and Spain. Um, prior to his current post, Mr. Gracia served uh, uh, as technical cooperation advisor at the Embassy of Spain in Costa Rica. He was also the Consul General in Cordoba, Argentina, and the Chief of Staff of the Vice President of the Institute for Ibero-American Cooperation. On May 1996, he was appointed Director General of the Institute for Ibero-American Cooperation, a post he held until uh, November 1999. Uh, in 2001, he was appointed ambassador of Spain to Cuba, a post he held into 2004. And after a period in the private sector, his last diplomatic post before being appointed Secretary of State for International Cooperation and for Ibero-America in 2012 was that of Minister Counselor at the Embassy of Spain in Buenos Aires. So needless to say, uh, the Secretary is very, very competent and very, very qualified and has done some amazing, I was going to say awesome, I've been with my kids for the last two weeks, an amazing job uh, uh, for, for, for Spain. So I couldn't be happier uh, to have him uh, with us today. Um, before turning the floor over to the, uh, to the secretary, I just want to give you a sense, or to the minister, I just want to give you a sense of how Spain's relationship with countries in Latin America has begun to shift over the past couple of years. As you all know, Spain and Latin America have a long history and a lot in common. Their shared history and culture have historically served as the foundation for their political and economic ties, and traditionally, those ties have been largely driven by Spain's interests. What we've seen in recent years, though, is a notable shift in that dynamic. Uh, as Latin American countries have developed tremendously over the past decade, uh, they, are increasingly, they are increasingly asserting themselves in their relations abroad. They are, in short, better positioned, or many are better positioned than ever before to take on their partners abroad as equal players. And those changes are reflected in the numbers. Over the past year alone, Latin America increased its investment in Spain by 48%. As business here in the Americas came to view Spain as a rational way to expand and diversify, particularly given their shared language and the potential for entry into the European Union's market. What has tra traditionally been a one-way investment flow has developed into a much more reciprocal relationship. In Spain's Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy and former King Juan Carlos both acknowledged this shift, even encouraging Latin American countries to invest more in Spain. And migration patterns are shifting too. Uh, and perhaps this isn't surprising given uh, Spain's uh, economic situation, even though we, we could say that it's rebounding, uh, and high economic growth rates uh, in Latin America. The past five years have seen a 400% increase uh, in Spanish immigrants to Latin America. In the same period, Spain saw a 61% reduction in Latin Americans applying for residency visas. So however, so whichever way you look at it, dynamics are shifting. Hopefully today's event will help to shed some light on these changes and on the redefinition of these transatlantic relationships. Uh, we'll touch on Spain's priorities in the region, the relationship with the United States and working with Latin America, as well as its vision moving forward uh, with these partners in Latin America. Uh, before I start, uh, or before we start, I want to remind you all that today's event is on the record and that we're webcasting the proceedings live to our audience online. Uh, when we get to the Q&A portion, uh, I would ask that you wait for a member of my staff to get to you with the microphone, uh, that you be brief uh, in your question, um, or if you have something short that you want to share with, with the rest of the audience. Uh, with that, Mr. Gracia, I turn the floor over to you. I welcome you. We're very happy to have you, and the floor is yours. Take it from here. Perfect. Thank you, Carl. And and thank you, CSIS, for having this, uh, for giving me this opportunity to, to talk to you this morning to share with you some ideas about the, the importance that Spain uh, gives to the to the relation to its relation with Latin America. Uh, the, 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 our King Felipe VI and, and then 
Crown Prince Philip uh, two years ago uh, said uh, in, uh, at a speech in Harvard that Spain is an American nation. And an American nation in the whole sense of America, not only Latin America, but also including the United States, because our history, our shared history with, with America dates back for more than 500 years. And uh, we have been present in the region since that time with an increasing uh, interest in the region. We have shared 300 years of common kingdom. We, sometimes they, we, people speak about the colonial times, and, and in fact, it was never a colony. It, the, 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 the part of, uh, of Latin America or Amer the America were part of the, of the kingdom, and the, we sent here vice vice kings or virreyes, and these were vice kingdoms, and, and this was part of, the, of Spain. And that's something important to understand, that this is not only a part or a geographical interest or priority of our foreign relations, it's part of our own being. If we want to understand Spain, we have to understand this with the American dimension. And on the other hand, if you want to understand especially Latin America, but also part of the American history, you have to take into account this part of shared history with Spain. The Spanish roots, the, 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 the Spanish missions in California. We are going to celebrate next year uh, the, the, the foundation of uh, the first uh, city in, in, in North America, on San Agustin. We celebrated last year the, the 500 years of the arrival of Ponce de Leon at uh, Florida. And, and so many ties that, are, that have kept kept us uh, together for many for so many years so so i think this is this is true we are an american nation as an american nation we have different interests we are part of europe of course and our history also and our geography uh, brings us to europe and the first important endeavor of of democratic spain after king juan carlos took office and was crowned in 1975 was our interest in being fully part of uh, the European Union. And that's something that with the, uh, with the contribution of, of all the political parties in the Spanish society, we, 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 we got in, in 1985 and we, we are members of the European Union since that uh, date. And this has, this has brought to Spain prosperity and this has brought a, a, a sound democracy and this has brought also the capacity to act in the world. And once we, we reach this uh, European dimension that was something that was due to Spain because of geography, culture, and of our, because of our ambition, we had to build also our Latin America uh, dimension. And, and, and this Latin American dimension has always, always existed along the years. And, and if you look back in the, 19, in, in the 19th century or in the... 20th century, even under Franco's times, uh, the, the dictatorship in Sp the times of the dictatorship in Spain, there was a huge relationship based at that time in language and culture. There is a lot of institutos, institutes of uh, Hispanic culture all over Latin America, and there was a relationship also based on migration. When Spain was in trouble, when we we had some difficulties in our uh, labor market in, in the at the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, well, the the, the natural way to to, to escape these uh, hardships in Spain was traveling to to Latin America. So there are huge and very important colonies of. of of, of Spaniards in all Latin American countries. It's much more important the migrations that took place in the 19th and 20th century from Spain to Latin America than the ones that took place under the uh, vice kingdoms or under the, the, the time that we were part of, of, of Latin America. Latin America was part of the Spanish kingdom. So, so this has been a tradition and a, and, and a way of, of acting in, in the world. And, 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 and after that, when we had the capacity to act in a more uh, important way or in a more 
confident way in the world. When Spain was to open to the world, first, as I said, we had to go to Europe, we had to be part of Europe. But the second uh, dimension, the second uh, priority for us was to work in Latin America. And if you see in the last 35 years, 40 years since our constitution in 1978, we have built a link, a, a network of, of, of uh, interests with all Latin American countries that I think that is, is not equal to any country in the world except probably the United States. We are present at all levels of Latin America uh, society, of all levels of Latin America life, every day's life. First, we, we started with a political uh, engagement. And, and, and this, in, this, in, this, uh, in this part, I, I want to highlight the role of King Juan Carlos. He, he, he was the first king to travel to Latin America, in spite of 300 years of common, of common, int, of, of common government in, 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 in the old times. No, no king from Spain had traveled to Latin America. In, in 1976, he traveled to, as the king of Spain, to, uh, to Dominican Republic, and, and the then president said, oh, Majesty, we have been waiting for you for 500 years. Finally, you, you arrived. And, but he's played an important role in the linkage between Latin America and, and Spain. And, and he's traveled all, uh, around Latin America, all to all countries, and, and, and he's built a, a, a network of, of interest and also a network of, of friendship all around Latin America. Second, we had a success story, the, the story of Spanish transition. And this is something that has been very useful to most Latin American countries. Uh, I, I used to say that the idea of people from of my generation in Spain, of Latin America, is a Latin America that has been striving to get out of, uh, of poverty or to improve their uh, quality of life and the quality of, of democracy in most of the countries. But this is because of the, of, the, of the decay of Latin America in the 70s and the 80s, especially. But this, was, this wasn't true in, in the 40s and the, in the 50s and, and previously. So, but what we found when Spain reached democracy and when Spain reached prosperity through our partnership in the European Union, uh, we, we, we found a Latin America that was suffering in many cases a lack of democracy, that was suffering also uh, tremendous difficulties in, in, in their economies. So. The, 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 the idea of, of engaging again with Latin America became natural to, to engage in political terms. And the Spanish transition served as a model for many Latin American countries. And we were uh, the solidarity of Spain with most countries, especially in, in South America, Chile, Argentina, uh, Peru, many of, of the countries that, have, that were suffering uh, dictatorships at the time, they, they benefited from the solidarity and, for the, and from the, 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 the support of, of the Spanish governments all along this, these years. Second, we had also the, the, this, the, 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 the idea of solidarity. And when Spain joined the European Union, we, had we were obliged also as a European country to share part of our welfare and of our riches with other parts of the world. And naturally, from Spain, our idea, from past governments and well, governments of the two main parties in Spain, Popular Party and Socialist Party, we all agreed that we had to, to start with Latin America, especially Central America. But many countries in Latin America have benefited from the, from the solidarity of the Spanish, uh, Spanish uh, people. So we, we, we established a network of development cooperation in Latin America in most countries. And I think that it's been quite successful. We have been present at the, at the, at the transitions in, in Central America, the end of wars, of civil wars in Latin America. We have been working with the, with the, with the military, with the security forces, with the social programs, 
programs in all over Latin America, but also in, in bigger countries such as, as Peru. I, I think that Peru is one of the most successful countries now in Latin America. But uh, it was a country that in the, in the 80s was about to disappear. It was uh, almost uh, a failed state in, 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 the, in the late 70s and in, in the 80s. And, 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 and people said, what can we do in, in, in Peru? Uh, there is a, a terrorism by Sendero, the Shining Path, which was uh, outrageous. The, 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 there was the inflation, there was a wreck of, of finances. All, 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 all you could see in, in Peru was, was uh, difficulties and, 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 and hopeless. And we, we have been active in, in our cooperation with Peru since the 1980s. And we have been accompanying Peru, Peru and the different Peruvian governments all along these years. And now that Peru is attracting capital, that is a, a country that is uh, reducing equalities, is a country that is, is a, I think, is a good example in most of, uh, of the world. I think that we can be proud that we have been we, we were not the, 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 the main force in the change in Peru, but we have been, together with Peru, we have been accompanying Peru in this path towards a, a better life. So, so solidarity, development cooperation has been also an important part of the engagement of Spain with Latin America. And the third uh, idea uh, on this engagement has been uh, investment. When in 1988, 89, uh, Spain was already part of the European Union. We had benefited from the good governance and from the, um, fr and from the solidarity of, of our friends from, from other parts of Europe. We, we, we had a very small private sector, mainly coming from public sector that was pri uh, underway of, of privatization in, in most uh, fields of, of the economy. And Spanish companies felt the need to, to expand. They had the, the, the European market open, which was very benef which was beneficial for us. But we had to, to expand. We, uh, my, my first post uh, as a diplomat was in, in, in Costa Rica in 1988, and I was envious of the Dutch or, or of the Belgians because even the, the, they were small countries, they have multinationals. You could see Philips or you could see the Heineken or many brands that were world-known world world uh, uh, brands. And we didn't have any. And now, uh, 20, 25 years later, we, you can see, you go, you go to Sao Paulo and you see Santander, you see Telefonica, you, you, you see Iberdrola, you see most of the companies that are relevant in, 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 in the important sectors of the Latin America economy come from Spain and are, are now part of, of, of what we call multilatinas or multibericas. They are multinationals that are the result of the, of the cooperation between Latin America and Spain. So the investment in, in Spain has been very important, has been huge and has been relevant to the Spanish uh, development in, in recent years, but also for Latin American uh, countries. Uh, we have invested more than 150 billion uh, euro all over these years. That's the stock of, of investment in Latin America. Half of this investment has gone to Brazil, which is something that is probably striking. And the second, the second recipient country has been Mexico. But what is more important? It's been important in reducing the, 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 the exposition of Spain to a small market, such as our Iberian country, or to a, 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 an homogeneous market, such as, 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 as Europe. And we have been able to, to open our markets and to also diversify our risk in the world. And during the past crisis, economic crisis, it's been very, very important for us to have multinationals or to have important companies all over the world. And part of the, of the benefits and part of the, of the help that we needed to recover from the, the, the recent recent crisis came from Latin America and from the results of the Spanish companies in Latin America. So, so it's been, uh, I think, beneficial for both, 
both parties, for Latin America and for Spain. And also we are engaging in, in, in political terms with, with Latin America. We, we, we say that we have a, a, a family relationship. And when you are in a family, sometimes you get on with your brother, with your sister, but you don't like very much your brother-in-law or your cousin. And that happens with, with a family like the Ibero-American, Iberian family, no? Ibero-American family. And, but our duty, and I think in, in our, our interest, is to, to talk to all the members of the family, to, have, to trust them, to try to, to, to work with them, because at the end of the day there is a solidarity, especially in Latin countries and in countries of Latin origin. We know that the, the, the importance of the family is, is, is relevant for our welfare. So, so we, we talk to all of them. You can get on better with parts of the family, and that's what, what we do, and I think that we are taking advantage of both countries when, when we get in a, in, into this kind of relationship. And, and I, I, I would like to, 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 to highlight the, the, the important, the good relationship that we have now with Mexico, which is important because when I joined the diplomatic career, it was very difficult for us, the, 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 the dialogue with Mexico. They came from many years of, of uh, distrust on, on, on Spain or on the, on the dictatorship or on, on, on because they were the, they were the, 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 the siege or the, they were the headquarters for the, the remains of the Spanish Republic. So they brought a lot of uh, uh, difficulties in the relationship with, with new governments in Spain. So we had to, to, to renew our political re relationship. Mexico is one of the big countries in Latin America, like Peru and any uh, others, but they have a strong uh, pre-Columbian uh, roots that are important in their history and that are important also in the, in the imaginary and the, the, the world uh, vision that they have. And they had some kind of, and they are the, the, the biggest Spanish-speaking country, so they, they, they were competing with us on terms of, of language also. But I, I think that uh, I'm very, very happy that we have managed to, 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 to bring all of these uh, possible difficulties into a, a common interest. And the recent uh, trip of President Peña Nieto to Madrid uh, some, some weeks ago, I, I'm sure has been successful for Mexico and for Spain. And we have built a, a relationship based on trust and on a common interest that I, I think is, is valuable for both parties. So this is the, 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 the network of relations that we have in, 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 in Latin America. And just to, 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 to summarize, uh, we had the idea, and, and King Juan Carlos was, was uh, one of the, of the driving forces in this idea, to establish this family community that we call the Ibero-American Summits. And this is something that has been one uh, wonderful uh, invention of, of policy, of foreign relations, because it's been working very well since 1991. The first uh, summit took place in, 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 in Mexico, in Guadalajara, and it's gone to the next summit that will take place this year in Veracruz and in, in Mexico again. And, and this will close a, 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 an era of uh, the Ibero-American summits that have allowed Latin American or Ibero-American countries to join when there were great, uh, deep disagreements between among, among most of the countries in Latin America, but we have been able to talk together and to find a common interest in, in, within the Ibero-American summit. After Veracruz, we'll have these summits every two years, and I think that we'll uh, have the, 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 the new renewal of the Ibero-American summits that will be also beneficial for us. And, 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 and I wanted to tell you that this is, uh, that that's why Latin America is so important for us. Uh, I, was, I was telling Carl before we, we, we came here, down here, that uh, uh, some touchy issues or Latin American issues are internal affairs in Spain. So when we talk about foreign policy in Latin America, this has a lot of, 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 uh, of uh, reflect in, in, in internal politics in Spain. 
there is division also on the views on some 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 topics in in Latin America, but this is because this is part of our our, our interest and our sentiments, uh, our feelings, and and, and 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 how we we feel Latin America. So we cannot be uh, dealing with Latin America as we deal with a foreign region. We deal with Latin America as part of our own being, if in part of our own uh, future. Well, thank you for, for your opening. Um, <clears throat> you, you've talked, and there's so many similarities with that last point that you made. Uh, for the United States, a lot of the issues that have to do with Latin America are also are domestic. Uh, uh, and the implications, and, and we're seeing some of that right now with the, the immigration issue. Uh, we've seen it in the past with, with Cuba and Florida and electoral votes uh, and, and different constituencies that you see, um, uh, Hispanic constituencies that you see in the United States and their participation in different areas. But you talked a lot about the priorities that Spain has uh, in the region. The region is a very diverse region, as you know, uh, and there's a lot of positive things happening. In North America, you have energy and commerce. Uh, you have countries coming together, uh, like through the Pacific Alliance, in a way that they've never come to before. There's the promise of Brazil as well. Um, I wanted to get from you a sense of what do you see are the challenges and what do you see are the promise uh, that the region holds uh, for Spain. Uh, if you're looking forward, I mean, and, and for most of the people that are sitting here, I, I think it's an easy question to answer, and I think you've touched on some of it, but going forward with the region as diverse as it is, what are the things that worry you, and what are the things that you see are opportunities for, for Spain and the region? No, I, the, the, the difference in the region will not be an ideological difference, I guess, in the future. It will not be about uh, ideology or about uh, socialism or capitalism. I think that the, the, the difference will be between reforms and non-reforms. And, and, and I think that the, the, the region, as well as other parts of the world, we, needs to update the institutions, to update the economy, to update the, edu the education, and these are the challenges that, that they will have to face because, as I, uh, I spoke from, from the point of view of Spain, but naturally Spain has interests all over the world and also Latin America will have to compete with the rest of the world, not only with, with the United States or not only uh, the, will be relevant the relationship with, with Europe or, or with, with Spain. But you have to be prepared to compete in a challenging world and this competition uh, in this competition you, you may be prepared or not Latin America has especially South America has a, a huge advantage and they have been taking advantage of this of this fortune for, for, for the last decade because they, 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 they the South Americans they all always tell you that they have what the world needs they have needs they have territory, they have water, they have natural resources, they have food. So, so they, 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 they have a lot of opportunities to be a great part of the, of the, of the world and, and also to be a leader part or leader uh, geographical or region of the world. But to be able to, 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 to implement all these capacities, they need reforms. And, and, and I agree with, with what uh, President Peña Nieto said in the inauguration speech, that they wanted to, 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 to be a reformist country, a reformist government. And, and they will have to reform as they, as they have done first, education, labor market, com economy to be more competitive, uh, telecommunications, energy, and infrastructure. All of this lags in Latin America. And all of this is something that governments will, 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 will have to face in a way or another. Each government will have to decide whether or what is the prior priority in reforms. But if you don't reform, if you don't update, if you don't uh, get in touch with the world, you won't be able to 
take advantage of these of these capacities that you have in, mm -hmm. in the region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit about the Ibero-American summit, and I guess you know a lot of people that follow regional affairs see this proliferation of summits uh, and summit processes. That being, you know, the OAS, uh, CELAC, uh, UNASUR. You have all of these summits. And I would say that a lot of folks look at those summits with some skepticism and say, you know, these guys get together, what do they achieve? What do they get out of these summits? I can understand how the Ibero-American summit can be a framework for Spain uh, getting together with countries in the region. But can you talk a little bit about what is achieved? What makes it special? What do you, what do, you do in the Ibero-American summit? And what do you achieve that's different from these other ones? Uh, are there, uh, in Washington speak, what are the deliverables? <laughs> yes. No, first of all, it was the first idea. And, and at, the, at the time of the first Ibero-American summit, nobody could imagine that we would join all the Latin American countries, plus Portugal and Spain, uh, and to admit uh, Cuba at that time, which was uh, something striking for many people. So for Cuba, it was very important to, 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 to be able to have a forum in, in, a, in, a, well, in a friendly or in a familiar way to discuss some issues that, that were important at that time. And, and so I think it was first, uh, the, 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 the importance is that it was the first forum of this kind. Afterwards, UNASUR, MERCOSUR, uh, CELAC have ar ar arised, but they are different. Uh, they can be a forum for uh, political concertation. It's important for Latin American countries to have their own forum because they say, well, uh, within the summit of the Americas, we have to share the floor with uh, Canada and the United States, and well, we cannot talk freely and we are not able to, to, to do that. Well, now they have this forum through CELAC and, and somehow to, with, with UNASUR. And, and we can see that this is important for Latin Americans because to, to, sometimes you need to be or to, to, to feel yourself part of something where you are relevant and where you are, you are important. And, 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 and the Latin American countries have developed a kind of, of, of solidarity or regional solidarity, not always uh, working, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to soccer. Because if you look at the papers <laughs> today, you will see that there is no compassion for our friends from Brazil in any, in any Latin American country. But, but at the, uh, there is a kind of solidarity, not always Solidarity is positive because sometimes when you are so uh, compassionate with, with, with someone else, you don't look at the, at the weakness of this person or of this country and you are not able to, to, to help this person in, in point, pinpointing what is not working. But well, solidarity is something that is natural to, to human nature and we have, uh, we have to, to, to understand this. And, 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 and Latin Americans may feel comfortable in, in a forum where they are alone and they feel that they can manage this, 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 this idea. So, so I think it's positive for us. And, and there is no competition with the Ibero-American Summit because what we have done uh, along these years is to focus on what the, 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 idea, the, the, the points where we are more effective, and, and we, have, we, are, we are effective in education, language, culture, and also in business, and I think that the, the, to, to provide a space for business. So these are the four ideas that the new uh, Ibero-American Summit or the new Ibero-American Conference will, will be focusing in the future. And the new Secretary General, Rebecca Greenspan, is, is, is aware of this, and she's working in these in this, uh, prospects. And I think that if we don't try to, to take the place of other forum, we, we can be very effective. And, and it's a forum where most Latin American, Latin American countries and Ibero-American countries will feel comfortable and will feel deliverable. We, we are going to, 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 to present to the presidents in, next, in the next sum, uh, summit uh, some deliverables. I, I just had a meeting this morning with the president of IDB, and we have some ideas of deliverables that I will not uh, tell you right now. But, but 
things that are very practical in terms of the interest of Latin America and, and Iberia America, and that working together, Europe and, and Latin America, or in the Iberian Peninsula and Latin America, we can be more effective. Um, and before I open it up to questions um, from, from, the, um, from the audience, um, one last question. Um, my colleague, he, uh, my fellow colleague, my fellow director that does uh, international cooperation and in, in developments here, Dan Rundy, and I wanted to sort of ask this question with that in light. Um, so you're here, you visit with uh, our assistant secretary and other members of our government. Um, what areas does the United States and Spain work on together? in the region? Are they areas of assistance? Uh, what are the areas of security cooperation? What are the, what are the areas in which uh, most of our relationship towards the region uh, exist? Mm -hmm. No, we, we share information like with many other countries and we have political dialogue with, with other countries on Latin America because we are involved in Latin America and, and other governments such as even Russia or China are interested on on sharing information, but with the United States is a special relationship, and I think this this is important because I think that we are the two extra regional countries that share most uh, uh, more important interests with with the region. We are working together in in Central America for many years in the in the security strategy for Central America, and, and one of the topics that we that we that we talk about in, in, in our meeting yesterday was how can we contribute to, 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 to ease these, these, these problems that you are facing now in, in, the, in the, the border? No? And, I, and I think that the security and development in the region is, is crucial for this. It's not only to, 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 to solve the problems that, that you have at, 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 at hand immediately, but, but we have to, 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 to play a, a role in the medium and long term, so so we are we are working on security and we are working on development issues in in Central America, and I think that we have to 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 find a new a new look or a new approach to these to these issues because probably what we have been done doing hasn't worked enough, mm -hmm. and we have to be effective also in this in this in this manner. We have a very close relationship with all Latin American countries, Central American countries, and I think that we can work together with, with governments to increase the security patterns in, in Latin America and in Central America and to increase also the, 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 the capacity of uh, development of the countries in Central America. Okay. I'm going to open it up to questions from, uh, from the audience. Well, I'm going to start from the back to the front. Um, so we're going to try something different. If you could stand up, please. Sure. Thank you, Thank you very much for your remarks this morning. Um, I hope you'll allow me to delve on a, a bit narrower of a, a topic. Um, my name is Sienna Gergenti. I'm with B'nai B'rith International. Um, and we've been very encouraged with what we're seeing with the Spanish right of return for Sephardic Jews um, who have been expelled from Spain. Um, and I was hoping if you might expand on if that is part of a larger strategic policy towards the region, and what, if any, impact you foresee um, in Latin America? Sorry, I, I didn't. The, uh, La vuelta. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, well, why don't I, would you like me to take two or three yes, questions? Yes. Why don't we go with two more? I think there was the lady there, and we're going to come up to Dan up here. Hi, hola. Uh, my name is Marga. I'm from Spain. I work on science diplomacy, and I'm a researcher at the American Association for Advancement of Science. I research the scientific and technological cooperation between Spain and Latin America uh, with programs like CITED, for example. And I would like to, um, to ask you what is the, how Spain is integrated scientific and technological cooperation with the region in the larger foreign policy strategy or um, yeah, and the larger for the broader foreign policy goals. Thank you. And we're going to get up here. Yeah, I'm Dan Rundy. I hold the Schreier chair here. Nice to see you, Secretary. Thanks for being here. I have two brief comments and a question. 
first comment is I was a student in Spain a long time ago, and it changed my life in a very positive way. And so I know you have many students in Spain, and it's an important part of your diplomacy. And so I'm, I'm a product of that, and it was a, a very positive change for me. So thank you for, for that. But I want to congratulate Spain on the choice of Rebecca Greenspan. I think she's an excellent leader, someone I know well. She was at UNDP before. She's someone who's very inclusive and has a very sophisticated approach to development and knows everybody in the region. She's be vice president of Costa Rica, so I think that was a very astute choice and congratulations. I have a lot of hope for the future of that, um, that, that um, the, uh, the summit process as a result of that. So here's my question uh, related to this issue about security and development. I think there's a shared interest in the peace process in Colombia, and, and uh, if you could, between the United States and Spain, there was recently an election in Colombia. Uh, it's both a security challenge, it's a development challenge. How are you, how is Spain thinking about this? I think you could almost make that, you can make the case that perhaps we're going to see peace in our time, and so how do we think about helping get to peace in our time, and how do we help make that peace stick? So, thanks. Let me, let me just get this. A uh, woman here, sorry, and then we'll Thank you. start the question. Silvia Ayuso from El País. Um, you were talking before that uh, the Cumbre Iberoamericana, the Iberoamerican summits, were one of one of the first forums where Cuba also was invited, who was, uh, and also the privileged relationship Spain has with Latin America, including Cuba. Now the European Union has abandoned the Posición Común, I don't know, and it's restarting, relaunching the relationship. This also comes also in a time where in the U.S. there are increased voices. Uh, talking about uh, changing the relationship <coughs> towards Cuba, maybe not lifting the embargo, but opening up the hand. I, was, I have a double question on that. Have you, is this something that you have talked with the US in the sense, have they asked you how the US is, uh, the European Union is changing the position? Uh, how it, could it work? And second, could you imagine yourself Spain, uh, as Spain doing working as a kind of bridge for this kind of change in the U.S. Thank you. Okay. We'll start with us. All right. <laughs> Take your pick. Well, first, uh, no, just, you know, okay. the, the, the Sephardites uh, issue is, is, is a very sensitive uh, part of our history. Uh, I'm sure that we lost part of our, uh, part of our capacity, of our intellectual capacity in the in the past when, when, the, when the, the Sephardites were expelled from Spain. So, so and there's been also always a, a sense of a, a duty towards this, 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 this community. And, uh, and recently we, have, we passed the law to, to, to facilitate the, 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 the acquisition of the, the, the citizenship of, 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 these, of these people. Uh, we have recently passed this, uh, this, uh, this law in Spain. This will work in, uh, uh, through the, the, the Spanish uh, requirements to, 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 to gain citizenship. We, we have to be, to be sure that these people belong to the Sephardite community, that they have any attachment to Spain, and that they are interested in, in, in renew their ties with Spain. And in this case, they will be welcome to Spain, and as, as they are now, but they will be, this community will be welcome to Spain as, as national citizens. And I think it's something that we had to do and we are happy to, 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 to have done with, with the co in collaboration with, with the Sephardites communities all over the world. Uh, regarding uh, science technology, uh, one of the, of the main, um, of the main uh, ideas of the main uh, grounds of common interest in, in, for Latin America and Portugal and Spain is, is science, technology, education. And we have the opportunity and we have the chance to share two common languages or two very close languages, Portuguese and Spanish, and that we have uh, 500 million people who speak Spanish all over the world, 50 million of them living in the United States. So, so we, 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 language is not all. You, 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 can, you can work in a third language in a, uh, or in a common language, but, but it's important also to, to, to develop these skills and, the, and to develop the, 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 the capacities uh, for science and technology. So what we are doing with most Latin American countries is to establish new 
agreements in order to alleviate the, 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 the problems that we have to circulate uh, or to, to, to have the, the, the capacity of, of, uh, of mobilizing the, the talent uh, in our community. So this is what we have called the mobilidad de talentos, the talent uh, mobility movement. movement. So, and this is something that we are going to bring to the, to the Ibero-American Summit. And this uh, has to do with the problems with universities and with university degrees, how you, you, all, how you, you, you accept university degrees from one country to another, all the, the barriers that we have in each country in terms of uh, visas, student visas and so on, so to alleviate also this burden, and also the capacity to, to, to develop a career once you have your degree accepted in a country, and this has to be, this has to do with the bars in the case of lawyers or with the uh, communities or the, the colegios, as we say, uh, the, the of, of, of uh, engineers, uh, architects, and so on. So, if we take advantage of, of this opportunity, I think that we will have more capacity built in all around Latin America or Iberoamerica. America and sometimes most of the countries will benefit from, from this. Uh, regarding the... Uh, Rebecca Greenspan was not the choice of Spain. Spain was one part of the, of the countries and this was... she was, she was, uh, 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 she was uh, elected by acclamation. And, and we were part of this, but uh, the, uh, I want to stress that all the Latin American countries agreed on this and, and they were... Uh, very, very active in supporting the candidacy of, of, of Rebecca. Uh, Colombia is, I think, is a friendly country. We are very happy that they are in, in this uh, way to, 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 of the negotiation, in this negotiation to, to end a war that has been hindering the, the efforts of Colombia and that has caused so much uh, uh, suffering in, 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 in Colombia for many years, and uh, we are ready, we are available to work with the Colombian government. We have been contributing to Colombia to the peace efforts in the past. We are part of the OAS uh, mission for peace in, in Colombia for many years now. We have been developing part of the, of the development cooperation with, Bol with Colombia in the past years has been in relation with the peace process and with the uh, reunification of the country or the, 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 of the families, etc. We are working with the victims of the conflict and we have been working for them, with them for, for many years. And, and what President Rajoy told President Santos recently said, well, we are available whatever you need, we'll do our best to, to contribute to, to, to your efforts. But this is something that has to come from Colombia. Uh, in this kind of process, there are a lot of people who want to participate, uh, organizations, countries, be, to be on the, on the spot and to be on the, on the, on the lights. And, but I think that the most important thing is that the country need, knows the needs and, and, and the country must be able to knock on the door, on the right door, uh, to, 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 to look for help. And in this case, Spain will be available for any, any, any question, any, any requirement from, from, from Colombia. And finally, the, the easiest question, Cuba. <laughs> One of the, <laughs> of the things that I try to do when I, I have public speeches or when I talk about Latin America is say, well, finally I managed to talk about Latin America and not to talk about Cuba. Because as, I'm, as former ambassador to Cuba and, and as a domestic <laughs> issue as Cuba is, it's always uh, touchy for us. And, for our foreign policy, but I, I will tell you, uh, we are we are within the European Union. We have started a, a negotiation with Cuba um, uh, to to see if we are able to agree on a new uh, cooperation uh, agreement uh, between the European Union and Cuba that preserves. The, 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 the ideas that lie behind the common position, mm -hmm. that is, uh, that we will have to, to talk about political dialogue, about political participation, about human rights. And at the same time, if we find 
grounds of common interest to uh, look forward and to build uh, a, a positive uh, engagement with, with Cuba. And this is the, the mandate that the European Union has now on behalf of the 28 member states, one of them is Spain. If we, if we find a way of negotiating with the Cuban government, and uh, there's been a couple of, 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 uh, of meetings before, uh, up to now, uh, if we find a way to, 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 to cooperate in a positive manner and in a positive uh, interest for both parties, I think we'll be happy to, 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 to go into this agreement. And, and, and this is our position with, uh, within the European Union and with Cuba. I think we have time for, I'm sorry? Wait, hold on. Well, I, I think that this is also a domestic issue in the United States. I, I had the chance to, to work with Carlos Saladriga some years ago on a, on a program of uh, Brookings Institution, and, and we had the chance, I had the, the opportunity to know the, the, the interior uh, shape of, 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 of uh, U.S. Uh, policy towards Cuba, which is uh, very uh, complicated to understand from, from abroad. This is something that has been built along the years, and, and it has very specific, uh, uh, specific uh, items that, that, that we don't manage in, in other parts of the world. But I think that, uh, that, that the United States is in, in this discussion, uh, the society, the political community, the government, and I'm sure that they will find a, a way to, to, to work with Cuba. The, the, I know that the, the U.S. and Cuba uh, hold meetings and they, 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 they talk uh, to Cuba in several aspects that are of, of common interest, and I'm sure that they will, they will find a way of, of, of solving this. I think we have question, and we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Sir, just get a microphone. Um, hello, Maximiliano Trujillo from Tonio Burgos and Associates. I wanted to ask uh, a question since you mentioned a couple times regarding the 50 million of Latino ancestry that live in this country, which would not make us a Latin American country, so not necessarily in your portfolio, but um, what are the efforts that are being made to harness that uh, to have an investment opportunity in Spain and Spain opening the doors for Europe to the Latino community that is growing here, especially the business community. And as a side note, I know that your foreign minister was in Puerto Rico recently, and Spain can provide some guidance to Puerto Rico, not just how to open Spain, but open Europe, especially considering the circumstances that Puerto Rico is facing right now. Spain going through this a similar process, different circumstances, but same feelings of pain and challenges maybe you can provide some guidance uh, on that manner as well. Mm. Thank you. Uh, I think that the, 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 the force or the, 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 the importance and the influence of the Hispanic community in, in the United States is, is growing and is, is, is relevant, for, for especially for the United States. And, and this country is able to, 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 to admit, is, is very flexible at, at, at having this at uh, knowing this, these opportunities and to, 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 in, uh, to incorporate these people or these communities in the, in the political game in, 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 in the United States. So for us, it's, it's very important that 50 million Americans speak Spanish as a mother language or as a, their, their, their original language. And, and it's a, a something good for us because it's easier to, 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 make, to have business with people who speak the same language. And, and you have a, a certain common feeling in, in, many, in, many, in, many, in many aspects. Uh, what we are doing is, is we are respectful of the, of the, of the organization of, of the United States. And we, we understand how they, 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 they are organized and, and the, the way they act in this, in this aspect. But we, we are providing opportunities for the Hispanic leaders in, 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 in the United States and we have a program 
that has allowed us to bring to Spain hundreds of uh, Hispanic leaders to, 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 to know, uh, to get to know Spain, to get the, to know the, 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 the capacities of Spain and the relationship and the possibilities that they have uh, in terms of investment or research or uh, education and so on. So we received every, every, every year a group of Hispanic leaders and there is a network of these Spanish leaders who, who come to Spain through the Carolina Foundation and I think that this is something uh, positive for, for, for all of us. Uh, regarding Puerto Rico, as I, as I say, well, I, I think that there is investment in Puerto Rico as there is in other states of the United States uh, because the, there is a lot of investment of Spanish companies in the United States and, uh, in, uh, not, 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 uh, without relation with, with the, the origin or, or, or with the cultural ties. There are investments in in the field of energy that are very important in many states of the United States. In Puerto Rico has enjoyed also a part of the investment of, of Spanish companies, especially in the financial and infrastructure sectors. So Puerto Rico has the, the, the capability and the possibility of, of increasing the investment from, from Spain and they can do it through their uh, uh, the, the bilateral relation between the United States and Spain, and they can come also to Spain as they, as they do in, in, in commercial trade and investment missions. And so, so this is nothing, nothing different from, from other parts of the states. Great. Um, I think I'm going to close it, but there was one issue that didn't come up that I'm, I'm just going to ask you about, which is how do you see the new king... Uh, being active uh, in the region, do you see a continuity from his father, or do you think uh, that it will change in any other way? No, no, I'm sure he will continue the, 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 the work and the, and the efforts of King Juan Carlos, because uh, King Felipe has been traveling to the region for many years, since 1996. He has attended almost every inauguration period in Latin American countries. He knows very well all the, all the politicians in Latin America because he's been the only one who has been present in, in, mm -hmm. in many countries. We, with Pablo, together with Pablo, we had the opportunity to travel with uh, Crown Prince Felipe uh, along these years to many inaugurations and, 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 and he had the, 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 the ideas and the memory of things that we didn't know and that even the, the politicians in the country didn't remember because he had been four previous presidents at that time and he remembered the talks and the, and the, 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 the problems that the country faced at that yeah. time and he asked, well, how did you solve this problem? Oh, I, I, I didn't remember, I didn't, I didn't know. So, so he's, he's, really, he's really very active. He knows the social community because uh, during these trips to Latin America he always uh, had a, a lunch with a group of, of, of persons, uh, representatives of the, of the different parts of, the, of each society, so he knows most of the persons in the, in the cultural sector, in the economy, that were his age, and, 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 and they all <coughs> they, all of them remember very well the, the, their conversations with uh, now King Felipe, so he's a person that is extremely well prepared, uh, he's eager to, 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 to enhance the relationship of Spain with, with, uh, with Latin American countries. He knows very well the region, and he's also very well known. So, so I think that we have a, a bright, a brilliant future with King Felipe. Great, great. And with that, uh, I, I want to thank Secretary Gracia for coming uh, and speaking here at CSIS at the Americas program. I want to thank you for choosing us. I hope that it was a stimulating session. I think it was excellent. So. Can you join me in a round of applause?